So this is my uh, Chicago Electric 10-inch uh, compound sliding miter saw you can see there. Item number, you can see it right up here, 98199. And the switch quit working on it. And I've taken the handle apart. And this is the switch that came with it. And the this black wire, which comes out of the motor, was hooked up over here. And the white common wire coming out of the power cord was hooked up over here. And then these two other two wires, which come out of the motor, were hooked up back here on the back side. Or I should say the right side. The right-hand side of this switch and the black and the white were hooked up to the left hand side anyway i've taken the switch out before i took it out i tested it for continuity and there was no continuity and once i got it out by taking two screws out right here uh, i tested it again for continuity and there is no continuity so the switch is no good I even tried to take it apart. I used my Dremel to cut to cut a couple little straps here and took it apart and uh, I could not figure out how to fix it. So I bought new, they call these Eaton uh, the first one I bought which was this one here and, they, and I wished that they would show a picture of the bottom side, but they didn't. So I bought this one here, and what it shows you is that when you throw the trigger, let me get it to focus here, when you throw the trigger, you're going to basically energize one and two at the exact same time. So you're going to have power across these two and power across these two. And that's not what I wanted. Uh, it's just basically an on off switch. And you could hook up the black and the white to say here and throw the, and uh, turn the power on and you would have power going to the saw but you would not want to put the brake across these two because then you would have power and brake on at the exact same time, which is what you do not want. So it was working as an on-off switch, but I decided to go ahead and try to buy another switch which would operate the brake. And I bought this one and it does work, but the problem is whenever you, if I was to put my meter on there right now, you would see continuity across these two without the switch being thrown. And whenever you throw the switch, that breaks the continuity. So there is no continuity here, which is where the brake should be hooked up. But whenever you throw the switch, then you have continuity across these two two on the on the right hand side so this is just the opposite of the one that i took off of there the one i took off of there had power across the left hand side and the brake on the right hand side this one that i bought as a replacement has the brake over here on the left hand side and power on the right hand side so that's just one of the problems. I'd have to redo the wiring so that I got the brake on this side, the left side, and the power over on the right-hand side. But this switch is also bigger. If I put, if I just put this one on top of the other one so that the mounting holes line up, you can see that this part over here on the on the replacement switch is much longer. 
So if I take this one up here and I try to put it into the handle, so those screws are lining up there, what happens is this, this thing, because it's longer, is hitting that, that part right there. So the original switch fit right in there, like, like that. But that means that the uh, mounting holes don't even come close to lining up. In order to line up the mounting holes, then this part back here in the back, I have to cut that part off with my Dremel and a cutoff wheel in order for this one to work. And it's the same problem whether I use the one that does not have the brake circuitry. Both of them, this part back here is too long to mount in my Harbor Freight handle. So I'm going to have to cut this part here off using my Dremel cutoff wheel. And then I'm going to have to redo the wiring if I want the brake to work. I'm going to put it on pause. So I took these four uh, posts off of that uh, switch that has the brake circuitry on it. And they were sticking out this way and I don't, I didn't need them. So once I took them off, I was able to screw. I just took the uh, black wire, for, which was over here on this side. I took it and rerouted it back over here and connected it down there. Connected the common uh, over here also. And the brake wires, I had to kind of double them back in there and bend them a little bit, but they're connected. And like I said, I was going to have to take that, uh, my Dremel tool and cut. So you can see that I did cut a little bit in there. Right there where that uh, plastic partition used to be, I cut it out. I probably should have taken some uh, footage before I put the switch in there. But one, now that I have the switch in there and I have it screwed down, with these two mounting screws, I basically don't want to take it out uh, to show you how I had to cut that post back in there, or that partition, I guess you would call it. But it's fitting in there pretty doggone good. Uh, if I take the top part of it, you gotta get these wires smashed back in there. I might have to uh, put it on pause while I put that wire back in there and try to get this handle back on. But it's going on. There it is. It's pretty much on. Um, let me put this on pause and get it on there. I had it on just a second ago. Okay, so there it is, pretty much the handle, top part of the handle back on. Uh, and you can see the seams are coming together pretty good. So I'm going to put it on pause and put the screws in. And I've already tested it. Uh, but the switch seems to be working just fine. I'm going to put it on pause and put the screws in. And then I'll. Uh, show you how it works okay so i got the handle all back together with all the screws we've got four screws here and then uh four more screws down here and that's why i had to take this this part this handle off so i could easily get to those four screws in there but basically one two three, four, 
five, six, seven, eight. Eight screws plus the two screws for the handle, total of ten screws. And uh, I haven't plugged it in yet, but you can see that the switch seems to be working just fine. It's not binding up. There's uh, power. There's the plug plugged into the uh, saw. Fingers crossed. Looks like it's going to work. Success. So now I can take it back down to my horse bar and I brought it up here because it's pretty cold out today. It's supposed to snow. Uh, this, by the way, I bought from Harbor Freight also. And uh, I really like it. Uh, the mounts for this saw right here you just pull this little handle on both sides there's a there's a handle you just pull those up and that releases the saw from this from this platform then you just tilt it forward it's kind of locked in with these uh, the other side over here you can see how it's kind of locked in right there so once you uh, pull this handle, then you can, on both sides, then you can tilt it up and slide it out of there, and then you can just carry it. So I'm going to do that now and take it back down, unplug it, take it back down to my horse barn where I use it. Well, I get that unplugged. I can't do it with just one hand, apparently. Pause it. So there is the saw off of the miter saw table. And uh, I really like this table. Uh, before I bought this table, I would just put it on my uh, picnic table. <laughs> and it did one to move around a little bit. I never did drill holes in the picnic table to fasten it down. But anyway, I uh, I think it was for uh, the sale right after uh, Thanksgiving that I bought this. I ordered it and uh, they delivered it and uh, I was able to save quite a bit from buying it on sale. But I do like this. Uh, these extend out. You can see there. And the yeah, same thing on the other side. So you can extend your uh, workout pretty good. Got the rollers. You can uh, raise and lower these if you need to. Both sides. Anyway, I, I like this table. That's the end of this video. Got my switch working. Got a new switch working.